Meditite. When have I ever picked up Meditite and said, yeah, I'm going to continue the run? Never. Not once. That hits my teammate. I didn't. Dude, Switch AI has got nothing on me. No. No way. And yeah, I decided I wanted to soul link this. Radical Red 3.1 Hardcore Mode is currently the hardest Nuzlocke around. Not only are the fights insanely hard, including legendary spamming gym leaders, and fights with weird and near impossible to navigate obstacles like permanent magma storm, but the learn sets and abilities that your Pokemon have are nerfed, to the point where some lose their entire viability. Drizzle Pelipper or Politoed? Nope. Shell Smash Crustle, Caracosta, or Cloyster? Unavailable. Imposter Ditto was splintered from the game, and Illusion for Zoroark, though still on the Pokemon, doesn't trick the AI. So anyways, yes, the battles are tough and your resources are spread thin. We actually set the record for the best Nuzlocke of this game ever recorded just a few weeks ago. So I guess the question is, what are we doing here? Squirk has been running Pokemon Run and Bun the past few months, another really hard difficulty hack. With his skill set and my unfortunate amount of hours behind the Radical Red Wheel, we are making the world's most impossible Nuzlocke harder, for fun and enjoyment, on purpose. Welcome to the first, and hopefully only, Radical Red Soul Link. The rules of this run are the same as any hardcore Nuzlocke, which you can check out here. The extra rules for us include that each Pokemon caught must be paired with another on Squirk's team, duplicate Pokemon cannot be paired together, and that we have to give the Pokemon the best name we can think of combining the two Pokemon names. And boy, was this run gonna be hard. We opened up with a Pignite Combuscan pairing, which we obviously named Cum Knight. As with any other Radical Red run, our next job was to load our party with encounters. Our next five pairings included Clamel, or Meryl and Clamperl, Scrouth, or Meowth and Scraggy, Tentacle, or Tentacool and Banacle, Ponipi, or Ponida and Fampi, and Spimple, a terrible no good Wurmple Spinarak pairing that was already prepared to be sacrificed as soon as possible. Both of our encounters were pretty rough. I might argue that individually we probably would have reset in a normal run, but this wasn't a normal run. Our goal was simply to survive as long as possible. So how did the first fight go with this team of misfits? Squirk opened with Clamperl against Metatite, which went great. Hey, Ari knows it's the go, trust me. I guess I'm Shell Armor, so I'm chilling. Do I die to this? No, I don't, apparently. Allegedly, I live Rock Smash. Oh. He'd have no issues with any of the Pokemon beyond that. On my end, things were peachy. Yeah, that's your call. So, anyways, Scraggy's dead. What? No! I think that in my head, all steel types are physically bulky. It's whatever. We have plenty of other Pokemon to rock with. And before heading into our next fight, Squirk hit us with a great, just super memorable line. Um, I'm just gonna wing it on my rival, I think. Yeah. Gary's team was no match for my squad, with Tentacle and Clamel stealing the show. On Squirk's side, Clamel beat Squirtle and Magnitude 6 from Ponipi put Snubble in range to faint. Bummer. I am dead to covet. Alright, bud. Good luck. What? How? How did that kill me? Rip Ariados. Rips. <laughs> Rips pimple, dude. This is a rough one so far. <laughs> Two deaths before Brock. We did pick up an extra encounter here, which meant Flabebe for me and Duck, 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 Duck for Squirk. Bugcatcher Sammy, a notoriously difficult run killer, was next. Lucky for me, Panida was a pretty hard check for this guy, and Draining Kiss Flabebe proved too bulky for the weak Volbeat. But Squirk was sweating only one turn into the battle. I mean, I might as well try. I'm kind of the go, actually. After a really fortunate side beam from Dustox on Tentacle, Squirk was able to incinerate the Volbeat and finish with Clamo. Squirk's bug catcher team was way worse than mine, but he squeaked it out. Two more encounters here, Count Starly and Sinistee, or Starty, and Numal plus Diglett, or Numlet. Yeah, this was some ass, but it was also just about survival. And survive we tried through a brutal Faulkner. I ran into a little trouble trying to beat the electric flying squirrel. Okay, we just have to not get crit. 
on the high crit move. Didn't get crit. Okay. Honestly, with Meryl and Tentacool both on my team, I was playing with the rules I was used to. By that, I mean I'm so used to working those two Pokemon into my strats, and they each check a Mon in Faulkner's fight. And once again, Squirk was staring down the more complicated battle. With a hard check to Trumbeak and almost nothing for Farfet, Squirk had to roll the dice on Ponipi. Give me a good roll! Come on! Yes! Kill! Good job. Go back to Amalga, come on. Okay. Shell Armor Clamel was enough to body Rufflet and Diglett beat Yanma. My man had to rely on Sinistrash, the worst early game encounter possible, to do real damage before finishing with Ice Shard Ponipi. Just insane plays to finish this one. And finally, all that stood between Squirk and I and a Radical Red Soul Link badge was Brock. The only problem was that neither one of us had both a Laleep and a Cacnea counter. Risking a couple of crits, both of our starters were technically capable of beating the tandem in one battle, but did we really want to roll those dice? Mid-battle, I decided I had no choice. It was either roll them or lose anyways. How much is Cacnea doing to Pig Knight? Plus one, Thunder Punch is doing 25 damage. I should kill. Get my power up punch. Does that put me in blaze? I'm in blaze. I'm in blaze. I'm in blaze. Please, 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 please. Kill, kill, kill. Thank God. Wow. Hilariously, Squirk had to run the exact same play, except Combuskin is just a little less bulky than Pig Knight. With only 2 HP left, Squirk had to make a decision, kill with Quick Attack and sacrifice his starter, or risk losing one more Pokemon on a potentially blistering pivot. I believe I live sand. Okay. So, I could Quick Attack, but I'd die. I'm in quite the spot. I can kill Cacnea with Combuskin, but if I would die to sand, which I don't want to do. Um, and obviously it's a random move. Well, it's definitely not using Bullet Seed here, right? That's what I'm thinking too, so I, I'm, I'm thinking Fampy maybe. Yeah, I'm, I would go Fampy on this one. I vote Fampy. 75% chance. Don't the do run, it! The run's over if you lose Combuskin anyways. Yes! True. It pin missiled. We're good. All I needed to do was navigate the rest of this fight playing optimally and cleanly. Oh, that is Rock Tomb. I'm a dumbass. Sinistee is dead. How could you do this to me? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I'm so upset. Whatever. One death and all I took out was Squirk's Sinistee. I didn't even feel that bad. At least Squirk's fight was going well. One Pokemon left. Ponipi just needed to finish the final Hippo Pop. I can't even say Hippo. Arrgh! The only problem was that the bulldozes that the elephant had just taken dropped Ponipi's speed below the Hippos. And the berry juice that Squirk's Mon had just picked up using its ability wasn't proking. Where? I don't have an orange berry? What is this? Okay. This is not amazing. I think I have to magnitude and pray. That's fine. We'll take it. Dude, I should have, should have switched Psyduck in there. That would have been perfect. I just didn't know who to attack. Or in proc, yeah, I guess so. Damn it. Um, bulldoze, bulldoze, bulldoze. I think I have to stay in a turn. Come on, Fampy, you got this. It's fine. Hit the big one. Okay, slightly bigger than last time. Okay. Eat it! Eat it! What the f I think it procs after you move. Does it really? Because that would be huge. I think that if you ice shard right now, it'll immediately proc, but I don't... Oh my god, I don't know that. Okay, I trust you. I say you roll the dice. Oh. Proc, please. Oh, you're the goat. Please live. That's insane. I've got that to live, is right? That last one did like Insane. Eight. That's actually so nuts. I think we live. We're in the same spot though. That's fine. You can just kill it, right? Or is there another Pokemon? Wait, is this the last one? Oh, it is. Wait, I don't take poison damage, right? No. No, no, no. Okay. That's crazy. That is crazy. Let's go. Fampy clutched up. Pickup's an insane ability. That was crazy, yeah. One badge in. This is the run. We're going to the Elite Four in our first Soul Link. There's nothing that can stop us. Yeah, Orco, my Oricorio that I'm trying to be is plus three right now. I don't... My feelings hurt, yeah. This might be a reset, man. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. So here's the thing. I would love to switch to Pignite right now on HP Ghost, which we would survive. And I would love... 
and I would love to click Sucker Punch. Except that, how, how on earth does that only do 30%? Okay, that's my best, that's my out. Uh, I have to play my outs. It's not likely, but it's my best play. So let's do it. HP Ghost, HP Ghost, HP Ghost, HP Ghost, HP Ghost. Okay, don't crit me and we're alive. Oh wait, no we're not. No! Yep, no we're not because... This is so sad. Yep, the game's over. It was a valiant effort. Whew. Are you kidding me? You want to reset it or you want to continue? Oh, squirk. I think we have to reset. Attempt two was just like attempt one up through Brendan, but far better. Our team and links looked a bit different, but there's no denying the destruction we unleashed on Radical Red early game. Barring our Viridian encounter, this was a near optimal run from my end. Once again, Squirk's team was dramatically worse than ours, but that's what he was here for, right? To carry me with Ladian and Clamp Pearl. Oh, Burmy's awesome. Trash Cloak Burmy is prime. Please roll spinner rack. Please roll spinner rack. I, I rolled the only thing better with Lediba. No! It's okay. He got his revenge. Okay. I can get some cool stuff. If I get a lowland shrew, I'm popping off. All right. I rolled it. I got a lowland shrew. Oh my God. Please tell me I get it so I can have it and you don't. <laughs> I did How too. Did you say that? <laughs> Let's go. You did I not. Him. I did. I did. I want I'm him. We, we have to re-roll. We're, okay, now we're gonna get like a uh, Squavit and Panpour. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, one, if one of us gets it, it's fine. Bro, I'm so mad at you right now. I got Star. <laughs> I got Squavit! <laughs> Let's go! You, uh, you still have your badge on your overlay, by the way. Please don't talk to me. Alas, we plowed through Sammy, picking up Numpy and Sand Dude before beating the snot out of Faulkner and strolling into Brock. Each of our fights were strategic, with both of our bugs taking out the almighty Cacnea and both of our dark types eliminating Lunatone. At the end of the fight, I just needed to know. Are you, um, deathless? I am, I just won. Uh, Sandshrew dodged two attacks with Sandvale and, and clutched up. From here, we went on a tear, pummeling everything in our way to Cerulean with ease, adding four new pairings along the way. Once in Cerulean, we added our egg encounters, blessing us with Scyther and Baneri. Our teams were competent enough to beat Gary once again, and Nugget Bridge was a bunch of tedious nothings. Five hours into attempting to soul link Radical Red, we decided to call it a night. Welcome to day two of the Soul Link. It's the same almost, except we're probably not going deathless and we're wearing different shirts. The first fight of the day was one that Squirk and I had planned offline because of how egregious this was going to be. The thing is, my box at this point had so many final stage mods and Squirk's box was super baby. Milk. Still, we put together something and tried. Squirk beat Arcanine with Sand Dude and pivoted to Marpearl on Drudagon. Fortunately, the beast switched out into Komala, giving Squirk the perfect lane to pivot through Intimidate Staravia and best the mammal with Binacle. The bad news was that Drain Kiss was a contact move, which Rough Skin Drudagon had too much fun with. Marpearl was on the verge of going down if this didn't pan out. Also, my Gorbis might die here. Oh, I heal so much more than I thought. Um, your options are, <laughs> I mean, realistically, your, your only real option is Graveler. Gorbis um, has passed away. <laughs> you killed Gorbis? I didn't kill Gorbis. It did not 1v1 the Dredagon. Damn. Time for a certified banger ice shard moment. I kill with ice shard from here. No doubt in my mind. Even at minus one, I kill, I kill, I kill. No way! Following that brief interlude, we met Togedemaru, who was determined to dice me up with U-turns and iron head flinches. If one bulldoze had landed, we'd be talking about a deathless grunt fight. Nevertheless, here I stood with a 3 HP Dawn fan about to lose to Iron Man Mickey Mouse. I might have to kill something, so... Uh... Yeah, Graveler definitely just died. And now, what happens? Um, I might lose another one. Uh, hold on, let me think. Yeah. Uh, be, well, so here's the problem. So because of this double flinch, Lopany, Lopany is gonna take 33 damage from uh, Zippy Zap, uh, and then that that'll leave you with 11 HP, and then I have to jump kick. So then it'll take Rocky Helmet and Iron Barb's damage. Yeah. So then it just dies. 
Well, if it clicks Iron Head, you know we're in a good spot. So I click Jump Kick and I just lose. Yep. That's what it is. Thanks for killing Target Demaru, man. I'm I'm very upset about it, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> that was unlucky. Three deaths on day two. Still, there was plenty more story to be told, and only Azumarill and Gorbis were super important deaths. The others, we were fine. On the next routes, we added the Murkrow and Slackoth Deadly Duo and the Chinchu Magikarp Tandem. For anyone curious, yes, we were allowed to have the same Pokemon, they just couldn't be connected to each other. Duplicate Pokemon cannot be paired together. The next big fight was the Cerulean Digrunt fight. My end of things went very smoothly by virtue of having a better team complexion. To be honest, I don't know what Squirk was supposed to do when Octillery walked in. What I wouldn't have guessed was a Staravia sacrifice into a 10 minute long Roost Skill Link Rock Blast stall in which Lady Rack would eventually out heal and defeat the opponent. But that wasn't even the last Pokemon that Squirk had to deal with. Raticate in the pocket looked terrifying and all of his team was drained. Despite its hard work, Squirk had to let our Lady Rack pairing go. Mock punching and pivoting into a Mareep sacrifice to let Burn do a little more damage before finishing with Quick Attack Combuskin. Three friends down, including my Giardos. We were bleeding, but that just meant the other Pokemon needed to step up. We both picked up an Eevee from Route 5, which we decided was fine if we took different forms. I took Leafeon and Squirk took Jolteon. Its name was Joel. That's fine. We also added Shelter and Chinchu to the team on Route 6. How we'd made it to Misty in a Soul Link of Radical Red is beyond me, but here we are, I guess. Our team previews were pretty funny, as Squirk looked to bring Jolteon, Combuskin, and Galar Lanoon to a fight I'd never seen them attempt, and I brought some weird stuff myself, including Mightyena and Arbok who I considered valuable sacrifices for a little sucker punch action if the time came. There was no way for us to both have optimal Misties, so we both huffed a little copium and walked in. My fight was super scuffed. Without Parasect, my plan was to risk a bunch of crits and hope for the best. I just go sludge. Weird. I like it a lot. This is perfect. Okay, sweet. Easy, easy, easy kill, easy kill. This is always, always, always Psyshock. Always Sashok. I could see it switching out here, and if it switched out, that would be devastating. I would just lose a turn by attack. Okay. It saw a kill with Scald. I didn't realize it saw a kill with Scald, but it did. <laughs> what, is, what do you mean? Dude. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling the dice. <laughs> That's insane. That was an 18% roll to kill. Wow. The rest of the fight was wildly breezy as we completed the challenge deathless. And Squirk, using Parasect on water pivots and Giardos to conquer Toxicroak, Squirk made this one look really, really simple. Two badges in, and Squirk was still stuck with a meta type. Camper Jeff was next, a double battle that really tests your understanding of Rad Red every time you try it. Squirk opened with Radagoon and Murkoth, opting to obstruct the turn after Fake Out to bait the two-stage defense drop on Ambipom. From there, Squirk would utilize Talonflame's Flame Body to attempt to burn the opposition as often as possible. I learned that this fight is actually possible to do Deathless while allowing the mime to live for more than a couple turns. On my end, things went a little worse. My opening play was to Emboar Heat Crash the mime, except Fake Out into that slot made things real difficult, and Mime opted to Psyshock crit our starter as well. Living at the hands of our Payappa Berry, I resorted to Intimidate Pivots with Arbok to minimize the damage I was taking. A million and one pivots in, and we were able to match Squirk's Deathless Proposition and carry into the next portion of the game. Four more Pokey pairings arrived. This was a good little moment for us. No Frillish for Squirk was certainly a bummer, but that Mon wasn't good until after Surge anyways. And was that the plan, really, to beat Surge? I mean, obviously, yeah, but like, it was getting tough. There were only two major battles left before we tried to grab the third gym badge, Brendan and Gentleman Tucker. Addressing Brendan first, the Hoenn character let me know off the start that he was not here to play. Not only did Joel only hit two bullet seeds when the third would kill, the AI sent Gardevoir in right after to trace Sapsipper to stop me from doing any damage. 
We did roll the 66% not psychic on the Binacool pivot, paving way for a little bit of success thereafter. But after Gardevoir inevitably switched out, we had to deal with the fact that Marpearl had passed away and my check to Hariyama now was Eckling, which just does not work. Drain Punch does way too much and heals way too much, and Eckling's Poison Jab doesn't do nearly enough to the bulky boy. Expecting Bullet Punch, Binacool had to do far more work than I could have ever really asked of it, and despite that terrible opening, we managed to deathless this very silly fight. Squirk, on the other hand, battled one Pokemon in the same time it took me to take out six. Brendan's Sleeking was burned, so it couldn't do any damage to Murkoth, but Hammer Arm was hardly doing the 50% it was recovering every turn. It was the burn that would wither it down, but that took forever. Squirk pivoted through the rest of Brendan's team and walked away without a scratch. All that remained before Surge was Tucker. Squirk opened with Wimpy, beating Alakazam with First Impression and Sucker Punch. Eckling beat Farfetch'd as well as Swanna before Doug Trio walked in. This was perfect. As the biggest threat in this fight, Arena trapped a flying type that is obviously immune. Krabish beat Doug and Dwebis beat Pika. I was not, unfortunately, as lucky as Squirk had been. Doug Trio stepped down to the battlefield in front of Numpy for us, who has at half HP and entirely stuck due to Arena Trap. Ooh, ooh, this is bad. Uh, uh, hold on. Barring crit, I always win this. Okay, please don't, please don't crit. Please, 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 please. Okay! All right! Anyways, what were you saying? The good news was that the rest of the fight was super smooth. Only six deaths and it was time for search. Would our Soul Link meet its match here and come to a close? Or would there be more story to tell beyond these three badges in a two-player Nuzlocke of the world's hardest game? I mean, Surge's team is anything but laughable. Rotom Frost, Mega Ampharos, permanent electric terrain, and an exploding reckless Hisuian Electrode? This team is hard to beat with a full roster. Down six Mons in a Soul Link where we can't get the most optimal encounters? Squirk loaded Eckling, Chinder, Yamion, Numpy, Spoifle, and Wimpy. I brought Joel, Magichu, Eckling, Numpy, Binacool, and Come Knight. Our plans were very different, but the goal was the same. Set our record with this fight right here. I opened with Joel, opting to roll an 88% range kill with Black Belt Adamant Jump Kick Nephion. 95%, 88%, Jump Kick, rolling it. A hit? I didn't get the kill. Joel would spend eternity in jail with Santa Claus as Sub-Zero Slammer punted our leafy friend. Come Knight would finish the frost and Binacool would scald the Hitmonlee. Flip turn from Magichu on Raichu would break the sash and allow Eckling to punish the Surfer Mouse. Evire would heal Magichu with Plasma Fist and allow an Icy Wind flip turn pivot back to Eckling to finish the beast. And as Numpy stared down the Mega Ampharos, burying it with Stomping Tantrum, the final Mon came out. It used HP Ice. I'm getting through. I'm getting through Surge. This is so dumb. Squirk's side of things was just as tough, except maybe with a slightly worse team. Flare Blitz smoked the opening frost before Squirk ran a very similar flip turn play to finish Raichu with Wimpy's first impression. Numpy cleaned out Surge's Mega with Bulldoze into Earth Power. Grumpig came out. All right, Grumpig, it's your turn, bud. Oh, no, not Grumpig's turn. <laughs> Get involved, buddy. Stop it. Get involved. All right, Lantern's still alive. Oh my God, the damage. I just fell to my knees. <laughs> These teams are so scuffed, man. I, we should not be in this. <laughs> no, no, we're fine, we're fine. I clicked flip turn and I don't know what my plan was. <laughs> it's okay, it's all, that's pretty much right in my head. I clicked flip yes. turn and I was like, this will be good. And I, I guess I go to Eckling here. Eckling, go get him, buddy. Okay, Grumpig's done his job. Squirk sacked Spoifel to give his team the best chance to win and finished Hitmonlee with Brave Bird. And after Yamion tried bulldozing Evire while the opponent switched into Electrode, Squirk worked an awesome grass move pivot into Talonflame. The speed dropped Hisuian form wasn't able to do anything about the oncoming Flare Blitz. The final Pokemon stepped in. It, yeah, it never CCs. Please. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I, just, I, wanted, I wanted CC. I didn't want Ice Punch. There we go. Sorry. I thought you were going to Lantern no, 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 or it's something. Okay. Lantern is like a decent backup, I suppose. Especially since this is always Ice Punch. <laughs> that damage was so funny. Dude. 
Dude. <laughs> the shadow shield damage is Oh my so god, funny. I just win. Let's go. Rune wanted the win. Wow. Let's go. Wow. Two free. How? We both lost one. So I guess we technically lost two. And we called it. Three badges in. Should we continue this? I think Rad Red has had enough of me, but what do you think? Go watch Squirk Stuff. I linked his YouTube and he deserves your love and also your views. So go. Okay, bye.